Chapter 2 The Barn School ended a few hours later and for Chumpty, that typically meant a short walk to Art's house. Normally, the three friends would take the main road from Mrs. Goose's schoolhouse to the farm where Art's family lived, but, alas, are they still trying to get that turtle off the fence post? Betty asked. The trio watched as a team of police and firefighters surrounded a lone fence post, one of a hundred or more that ran in a line next to the road. The way in front of them was blocked by yellow caution tape, with an officer standing guard, steering people away. Our farmhouse is right down the road. Can't you just let us squeeze by? Chumpty asked. No can do, the officer answered, shaking his head. Not even for a prince. Chief told us to put a three-block radius around the danger zone. Danger zone? Why don't you just move the turtle? Chumpty whined. We can't just move it. He replied, as if the question was ridiculous. We need to know how he got up there. That makes sense, Art said, nodding. There's an alternate road just down that way. You'll see the sign. With a scoff and a groan, they turned and marched toward the path pointed out to them. A small wooden sign greeted them a short while later, marking the entrance to the path they had to travel, a dark, twisted, dense patch of forest. The letters on the sign were faded and grass had overtaken its post, but the two words it bore were unmistakable. Forboden woods. Shouldn't that say forbidden woods? Art asked. Betty looked at him like he was crazy. This was not the first time she'd done this. Is the creepy forest of death not enough? You need the sign to say forbidden to? I'm just saying it's a typo. It's not a typo, Chumpty said, moving his eyes from the forest back to the sign. Forboden. It's a word. What's it mean? Art asked, folding his arms together as if he just won the argument. It means forbidden, can we go now? Betty answered impatiently. We're not actually going in there? Art balked, taking a step back. Chumpty was silent too. He didn't back away from the entrance, but he wasn't gung-ho about it either. Betty, as usual, was fearless. It's just trees. Look, you can almost see the light on the other side. She leaned forward to confirm her suspicion and the other two mirrored her movement. For a moment there was eerie silence. Then the sound of a rattlesnake fluttered out of the darkness ahead. Welp, let's go check on the turtle, Art said taking a step back for the main road. Betty's staff caught him and reeled him back before he could scurry away. Chumpty, tell him it's fine. I dunno, maybe we should find another way around. Uck, you boys. We take this path all the time in the winter. It's not dark and scary in the winter, Ut said, his hands curled up against his body like a Holstein Tyrannosaurus Rex. The leaves are gone and you can see the sky and stuff. Fine, she said, giving up. We will go the long way around the forest. She swung around and stuck a finger in Art's nervous face. But I'm going to tell your dad that you had a chance to be brave and chose instead to run away. Wait, no Betty, wait, Art begged but it was no use. The afternoon bled into the evening and it was sunset by the time they finally reached Art's barn. Well there goes the day, Betty sighed as she plopped onto a stack of hay panting from the long walk. The big red barn behind them sat next to a simple one-story yellow house in the middle of a vast farmland. Chumpty approached the entrance to the barn, eager to enter. We can still hang out for a little bit before, you know. Sounds good. Betty replied, her spirits already lifting again. They glanced over to Art, whose eyes were lingering on the loft window overhead. Don't worry, we'll get the thing, she said, reassuring him. And you won't tell my dad? Just wait there, she said, smirking at him before following Chumpty inside. Hey did you read the new grim book? She asked, calling up to Chumpty who was already halfway up the stairs to the loft. No, you know the king's horses won't let me read scary stories. A voice echoed from somewhere nearby, for your protection, Will shouted. Chumpty and Betty looked around but saw no one. I don't know how you deal with those guys always following you. Chumpty shrugged as he waited for her to climb up to him. I usually never see them, you know, for horses they're really good at hiding. They laughed together and entered the loft. The place was a mess, with papers blowing in the wind, and trinkets scattered about. Betty's mouth fell open. What happened here? Guys? Art called from below. They hurried to the window worried, 
but found him alone, nervously waiting. Betty called for him, sorry Art. Situation up here. Hold on. The place was ransacked, jumped he said, moving debris around with his foot. Who could have done this? Who else? Betty grumbled. That little Jack Horner Jr. Maybe. Chumpty he replied, looking around for clues. I'd bet two sheep he did this. Betty tapped the hook of her staff against her palm. You mentioned how you caused your class to have a quiz. Well, I wouldn't say I caused. This is classic Horner retaliation. He probably took the forest road, got here to confront you, then trashed the place when he saw we weren't here. Guys? Still down here. Art called from below. Art, Betty said to Chumpty, her eyes widening. We've got to get this place clean before he gets up here. Guys I'm in position. We know Art, Betty yelled back. We're just, uh, getting the thing. It's right by the window. Is it? I'm looking at it. Scrambling, Betty and Chumpty managed to pick up every scrap of paper and reposition every trinket and trophy that had fallen over. The room looked perfect. Oh here it is, Betty said, throwing out of the window a board tethered to a rope and pulley system. They lowered the plank down and Art stepped into it. What about the hoodie? He asked. Art, can we just do this without the hoodie? This one time? Can't you find it? I always keep it right by the pulley. It must have moved, Betty replied, shrugging at Chumpty, unsure what to say. Moved? Bring me up. Slowly they pulled on the rope, lifting their friend up to the loft window. Hey, Betty said, spotting something on the floor. She let go of the rope leaving it to Chumpty to keep the cow from speeding back to the ground. Can, it, wait. Chumpty sputtered, holding on for dear life. Betty returned to help a second later, holding a red baseball cap under her arm. Oh please oh please oh please oh please. Art was murmuring, squeezing his eyes shut, terrified to peek and see how high up he was. Finally, he reached the top and they eased him into the loft. See, you didn't need the hoodie. Betty said, smiling. Art fainted as soon as his hoofs landed. He came to, a moment later, still on the floor, and his eyes caught sight of a pencil lying next to him. Hey, this should be, wait, why is everything moved? Betty tried to play it cool. Oh Art, it's just a pencil. You don't even have fingers. Have you been redecorating? Art said, scoffing at the room which looked perfect to his friends but to him was filled with a thousand little mistakes, books were out of order, stacks of paper were inches out of place, the trophy of a cow jumping over the moon was on the opposite side of the room. My dad's trophy. He hurried to it and returned the trinket to the exact right spot it was supposed to be. Horner, Betty said, tossing the red cap to Chumpty. He tossed it into the trash can, not interested in letting someone like that ruin his evening. Okay, now that we're all here, Chumpty said, looking over to his friends, what should we do? Your Highness. A voice from the ground below shouted at them. The trio stopped to listen, to make sure they weren't imagining things. The sound of galloping hooves filled the air. No, Chumpty said, running to the window. I still have an hour. Below the trio, Will was standing guard. He trotted proudly toward the horses and exchanged salutes with their leader, a sharply dressed mare named Dolly. She approached the prince's bodyguard. All clear here, ma'am, Will said. Fine. She replied, annoyed with him already. We had a bit of a barn problem, all right, thank you. Turns out there was this kid. She lifted a hoof which silenced him immediately then leaned in closer and began whispering. Chumpty couldn't hear what they were saying but he could guess it meant a short end to any fun with his friends. Every time I try to have some fun my dad messes it up. He groaned. After the quiet conversation ended, Will solemnly stepped aside to let Dolly approach the barn. Your Highness you must come with me at once, it's not time for me to go yet. Chumpty begged. My dad, there has been an accident, she said, cutting him off. Your father needs you, my father, please your highness, at once. End of chapter.